Hey y'all, I'm Mickey Gousset. Now GitHub just rolled out a feature that a lot of us have been waiting for, YAML anchor support in GitHub Actions workflows. Now, if you've been writing GitHub Actions for a while, you probably found yourself copying and pasting the same configuration over and over again within a single workflow file. Maybe it's the same list of file paths for multiple triggers or identical matrix strategies across different jobs. Well, YAML anchors are here to solve that problem. But here's the thing. A lot of people are asking, why would I use this instead of a reusable workflow or a custom action? I'm going to try and answer that in this video as well. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you what YAML anchors actually are and how they work. The key differences between basic anchors, aliases, and merge keys. Why GitHub Actions doesn't support merge keys, and whether that's good or bad. And more importantly, practical examples of when to use anchors versus reusable workflows and custom actions. Now by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly when YAML anchors are the right tool for the job, and you'll have some that you can use in your own workflows immediately. Let's jump in. So what I see a lot of times with customers is they have a really big workflow file. One workflow file with everything in it. And there's a lot of duplication in that workflow file. And this is where the anchors can come in and help with some of that. So I've built a workflow file. It's not quite as big. If we go out here to, and I'll put this repo, link to this repo in the um, comments. But if we look at this workflow file, then we can see things such as, you know, we're, we've got our triggers. It, we're, when we push on these different paths or when we do a pull request along those same paths, we want this to trigger. If we look at our jobs, we've got a test job that has a matrix strategy for three different versions of Node running on three different operating systems. And then we're doing a checkout, and then we're doing a setup node, setting node to version 18. And then you'll notice in the second job, we've got that same strategy, and we've got that same step that's setting up node. So what you're seeing here is there's a bunch of repetition. Now again, this isn't that big a file, but you can imagine with some more production type code. These files can be thousands of lines long with a lot of code that is just copy and pasted, copy and pasted. So if I wanted to say update my matrix strategy to add another version of Node, I'd have to modify it in two different places. If I needed to, to change or add another path, again, I have to do it in two different places. This is where using YAML anchors shine when you have everything in one particular file. So when we talk about YAML anchors, right? Let me show you a, a fragment of code to kind of explain how these anchors work. So I've got a fragment of code here. And what we're looking at are two different things. The first thing is this, ampersand and some value. That defines the anchor. So think of this as defining a variable. So you put an ampersand and a value, and that's defining a, a variable, basically. It's defining the anchor. When I take that same value, in this case, front-end paths, and I put a star in front of it, or an asterisk in front of it, this creates an alias. Think of that as using the variable. So this is creating a variable with the ampersand, and this is using the variable with the star. When you put an ampersand, it's called an anchor definition. And when you put a star, it's an alias reference. Now, the thing to remember with all of this is this only works when you're in the same file. That's a key point you have to remember. All of this, all of these anchors and aliases that we're talking about only work when you're working within the same file. So let's look at how we can convert this file into something that uses anchors 
to allow us to give us a little bit of code reuse. So we're going to try a couple of different things. And I've got my backup file here in case I just completely, you know, screw this up. But let's grab all this code. I'm going to copy that. And let's add a new file. So we'll call this new file YouTube.yaml. We'll paste in the code that we had. So we'll call this YouTube demo. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to only define these paths one time. So what we're going to do is on line four here on this paths line, we're going to add an anchor. So we're going to call so put this as ampersand and let's call it front end paths. And that's basically saying that all of this is the anchor. So now what we can do is we can come down here, we can delete lines 11 through 14. And here we can put the alias to front end paths. So this will now take the paths from here and put them right here. If I need to add a new path, I just modify it in one place and it'll get updated throughout the file. So that's step one. First thing we want to replace. The next thing we want to replace is the strategy. Because again, we're defining the strategy in two different places. All right, so let's put an ampersand and we'll call this my strategy. And then we'll come down here where we define the strategy. We'll get rid of all of this. And we'll say star my strategy. And then finally, the other thing I want to do is actually, since we are doing the same setup node for both of these, I want to create an alias, one well on an alias, but an anchor for that as well. So the way you create an anchor for a step is on the first line after, I mean, on the first line after the dash, you define the anchor. So we'll call this setup node anchor setup node anchor and then down here where we want to use that we'll get rid of all of this we keep the dash and we just put star setup node set up node to reference the anchor that we were working with I could even do this to replace a whole job, right? I could put an anchor right here on this job and then I could rerun the whole job a little bit farther down. So let's see if this works by committing the changes. And if we come back over here to the actions tab, First thing we'll check to see is our YAML is valid because we can see the name of the workflow versus just the uh, path that would be there if it was not valid. So let's go make a change. So let's go edit the package.json. We'll just make a simple change here. We'll just put a space in the author name and we'll commit that change. And now if we go to the Actions tab, we can see that all three of our workflows are running, but specifically, the YouTube demo one is running. So we'll click that. We can see that it, it expanded out to you know our matrix just like we wanted it to. We can verify that the workflow file that we're running has all of our anchors in it. But we can see that everything worked the way we expected it to. Now, Let's talk about when you should not use anchors. 
If you have complex logic that needs to be shared across multiple workflow files or even multiple workflow files in different repositories, then reusable workflows are probably what you want. And if you need dynamic behavior with inputs and outputs, a custom action. Anchors, as we've already mentioned, are specifically for simple configuration reuse in a single workflow file. Now, one limitation you need to be aware of is there's another feature in the YAML spec called merge keys. How, right now, currently, GitHub Actions doesn't support merge keys, and that was because, if I remember correctly, they were going to have to write a whole kind of parser or something to be able to support merge keys. So it doesn't mean they're not going to in the future, but they didn't do that in this initial release. So I've got an example of what a merge key looks like in explaining what I mean by that. So if we look at this YAML file right here, in the YAML spec, in full YAML, what you can do is here we're declaring an anchor, base config, with two values, timeout and retry. So here I have a job, and I'm referencing that anchor, but I'm doing it with a merge key, which then allows me to override values on that anchor. So this allows me to say, take that base config anchor, put it here where I want it, but override specific values in that anchor. So GitHub doesn't support, this is called partial overrides, and GitHub doesn't currently support this right now. You either have to use the entire anchor or define separate anchors in different combinations or use like a reusable workflow or a composite action to do something like that. So there you have it. YAML anchors in GitHub Actions are perfect for eliminating repetition within a single workflow file. Remember the following key points. Use YAML anchors when you have simple configuration that's repeated in the same workflow. Things like file path lists, matrix strategies, or basic steps. Use reusable workflows when you want to share entire job logic across multiple repositories or files. Use custom actions when you need complex parameterized logic with inputs and outputs. And remember, anchors only work within the same file, and GitHub doesn't currently support merge keys, so you can't do partial overrides. Now, I've put links to the GitHub documentation and some example workflows that I've shown you in the video in the description below. If this helped you clean up your GitHub Actions workflows, hit that like button and subscribe for more DevOps and GitHub content. Let me know what's your biggest pain point with GitHub Action workflows. Put it in the comments and I might cover it in a future video. Thanks for watching.